Hey y'all, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to have Mexican food. Now, I'm not a senora and I'm not a pro at Mexican food, but I'm going to make enchiladas. And I don't have a recipe, so y'all are just going to have to follow the method along and I'm just going to do what I think I need to do. I'm going to put uh, beef and some cheese in the enchiladas and um, I'm going to use some canned red enchilada sauce and then I will use bought chili from a can uh, if they want the chili sauce on the enchilada. The H-E-B chili is absolutely delicious. So I'll doctor it up a little bit but that's going to be my base for my uh, enchilada gravy or whatever the proper name for it is. So y'all get on over to the butcher block. I got a new gadget. I'm going to chop some onion and I guess you call it a gadget. I'm going to chop my onion and get it to sweating off and then get everything finished and we're going to sit and have enchiladas for too long at the Jordan house. Okay, I've got them in the skillet and I'm just going to let them um, cook down. I don't want them caramelized, I just want them translucent and then I'll put my beef in and get it browned and then I'll add my seasonings and I'll start assembling my enchiladas. I'm going to use some more of that roasted garlic that we made the other day and I'm going to mash this whole one out. and put it in my beef. A bit of paper, Ooh, whole paper and all came out. If you haven't watched the video on roasting garlic and you're interested, I'll put the link down below uh, for the video where you can go watch it. I can get some more out of it. See how easy that just squishes right out and it's so good. Okay, I'm going to put every bit of this over there in my meat that I've got on the stove. And I'm just going to stir it in. Mash it a little bit more. Ooh, this is going to be good. When I was a kid, we never had had enchiladas or Mexican food. And, uh, my daddy was a roughneck on a drilling rig. And one time the rig was at Kennedy, Texas, which is way down south. And in the summertime, when school was out, well, we would go and daddy would rent a little apartment or something and we would stay wherever they were working for the summer. Boy, that was fun because I was born in Cleveland and lived in Cleveland all my life except for those few little bits of summer that we got to go somewhere else. Well, when we were in Kennedy, there was a little thing, and I'm surprised we went because we were poor. But it was a little old thing like a Dairy Queen, and they served enchiladas, and they were cheap. And sometimes we would go there and get some of those enchiladas, and I never will forget it. I thought that was the best thing I'd ever had in my life. And Mama started making them some after that. But I was six or seven, no. Yeah, six or seven probably, but I remember it, and I've been liking them ever since. So that was my first visit with enchiladas, and it was a lasting impression. I'm just going to let that simmer a little bit, and all the flavors, and I'm going to add some chili powder to it, and some extra garlic and onion powder, a little salt and pepper, and then I'll be ready to roll it up into my corn tortillas, and... Uh, put my little bit of topping on it. I gotta run and get me a can of old El Paso red enchilada sauce I've got out here in the pantry and get my chili and get ready to get this done. In I'm this little bowl I've got a couple of chopped Roma tomatoes and a seeded and chopped jalapeno pepper and about I would say three-fourths of a cup of a purple onion and some of the roasted garlic that I roasted the other day. I've got two or three cloves smashed up in here. And I've probably got a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a little bit of salt. And I'm fixing to add some black beans and corn to it. And this is going to be just a, a dip to go with our enchiladas. So, no exact recipe. I'm just telling y'all what I'm doing to fix supper tonight. Let me get my 
beans rinsed and get my corn drained and I'll get it all mixed up. Okay. I rinsed my black beans first till the water was clear. I may have to get a bigger bowl. Looks like I am. <clears throat> and then I drained the corn in the same uh, container. Isn't that pretty? And it tastes as pretty as it looks too. This is basically just pico de gala and then you add your uh, vegetables to it. I added some of this cheese to that salad that I just made, the pico with the corn and black beans, and it just kicked it up 10 notches. It's good. I figure that all of y'all probably make Rotel cheese dip. It just takes a pound of Velveeta cheese and can Rotel. My grandson, Richard, come walking in a while ago. I had no idea he was coming. I've told y'all he's been best friends with the boy behind us all their life since they were four. And Josh had gone down to Kingwood for whatever, worked or something today, and he brought Richard back. So He won't know what I had to eat, so I thought I'd just get in here and whoop something up and spoil him a little bit. Josh is the one that I call my adopted grandson because he's been here. Every time Richard's here, just about Josh is here, and I just love it. Put some life in the house. All right, I'm going to get something and give this a little stir. Get it in the microwave. Now, some people do this and add ground beef to it or sausage. One lady I know adds some extra milk and some cream of mushroom soup. That makes it too salty to me because the cheese is already salty. So when we make this, we simply have Velveeta and Rotel tomatoes. And I didn't want to use my homemade canned ones, so I used bought ones. Rotel tomatoes, for those of you that don't have them available, it's just tomatoes with green chilies and probably some garlic and onion in it. Just seasoned up tomatoes. I'm going to get this in the microwave and let it I'm going to use a spoon in. to get my avocado out of the shell here. Get me a fork so I can mash it all up. I'm going to cut me up a tomato real quick to put in it. And I have a rotta tomato knife, but today I'm just going to use this. Cut it in little pieces. My chopping skills are real educated, aren't they? But I get the job done. I've got some onion. I'm going to get my fork and mash that. I like that. to add a little bit of sour cream to it to make it creamy. I wish I had an avocado tree and it would just make two or three avocados every few days. I did freeze dry some avocado. I need to get it out and use it and uh, make some guacamole with it and see how it does. If I do that, I'll bring y'all along. Let me ask y'all something. <clears throat> you can comment down below. If I decided to do some videos, like say, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what I would call it, but cooking for one. And or then two. if you wanted to double or quadruple it, you could, you know, cook for more. Because I know that a lot of y'all are in the same boat I'm in. You're an empty nester. And when you get older, you don't eat like you used to. Most of us don't. And so I cook, and then I have so many leftovers. So what if I did a video a week, or tried to do a video a week of cooking for one or two, and had some scaled-down recipes? Would y'all like that? Comment and let me know, because y'all's comments are probably going to be what helps me make my decision if I would have enough people interested in watching. Just in case y'all are not real familiar with YouTube, you can make a little money with YouTube, but your your funds depend on people watching and watching the ads. The ads is what pays you. And it can get pricey trying to do videos. When I started out doing seven, uh, uh, seven days a week, let me just tell you, our grocery bill was high. So when you, when you watch and you comment, that makes it worthwhile. But I've started making a little bit of money and I'm so excited. 
excited about my apron selling and everything, but when y'all have somebody that you like to watch, if you would be so kind as to watch the the ads, if you don't want to watch them every single time, I can understand that. I don't like ads either, but it does help to, to support the channel. There's not too many that I watch that ask for help, for support, but uh, watching the video, your watch minutes are what they look at, how long people watch and then watching the ads. Just a little tip, if y'all didn't know that, it, um, it would help. Okay, now you want to add some garlic powder and it's to taste. So let's see. I'm just going to sprinkle it on because I'm pretty generous in my guacamole with the garlic powder. I'm going to add some onion powder. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have onion and garlic powder to season with. I would think I was lost. And some salt. And you want some lime juice or lemon juice in it and I happen to have a little hickey madoodle of lime juice. It's very handy when you don't want to mess with squeezing a lime. So in goes some lime juice. Needs a little more salt. And I'm going to add a little bit of sour cream, just for the creaminess. That's not an authentic deal, but it's authentically done at Gay's House. I'll just do it like this and taste it. See if I need anything. It's pretty good, just like that. All right, I'm gonna put me some plastic wrap on it so maybe it won't turn brown. Now I'm fixing to get busy on enchiladas. Then we I'm can gonna take my corn tortilla and put it in this hot enchilada sauce here that I'll probably let it get too much. <clears throat> let me see, I might rub that one on there because I need enough for all of them. And I'm going to work on this plate, and I'm just going to put me some beef. And some cheese. And roll it up, seam side down, and put it over into the pan. And I'm just going to continue to make these, and I will bring y'all back. Want to get them, when I get them off I'm sorry, y'all. I had a phone call. One of my first cousins passed away. And uh, I got all these enchiladas rolled and in here and cheese on top of them. I put my uh, chili mix that I told you I was going to use the canned chili on top of the enchiladas. And uh, then I put cheddar cheese on top and I'm just melting it. I'll show y'all when I plate them up. Some of this might have been a little ham scramble like when I forgot to video the enchiladas, but y'all saw me roll the first one. So I just rolled all of them like that. And then I spread my uh, chili mix over the top. And I used Hill Country Fair or H-E-B, a can of their chili. And I put a little bit of the canned enchilada sauce in it, added some extra chili powder and onion and garlic powder, and just jazzed it up a little bit. And then I topped it with cheddar cheese. And each corn tortilla had some of the ground beef that I had cooked and a little cheddar cheese and I rolled them up and then I put that on top of them and heated it until it was bubbly and y'all saw it in the oven. So we had a fun time. We had a good meal. Those boys had a full tummy and I sent some home for Josh's parents to 
have a little bit after a while or for lunch tomorrow or whatever. So today, I didn't have to worry about it all being eaten. I had me some good hungry people, and I love it when it's like that. I'm going to get in the sewing room and work on apron skin. Thank God for my orders. I'm so thankful. I'm going to get in there and work and um, get some more orders ready to mail tomorrow and think about what I'm going to do for Tuesday. I got a pretty good idea, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you wait and see. I hope y'all are being very prayerful. I hope you're watching your surroundings, trying to stay safe. This coming week, um, we need to be especially vigilant and watch because they're saying we may have some issues and I serve a good Lord that's able to put a hedge about us and protect us. So I'm asking him every day to protect my family, protect our property, keep his hand on us and direct our steps. That's all we can do. We can't do anything. We can't control anything or anybody. We just have to trust the Lord. So I hope that no matter what y'all may be going through or a mountain that you think you can't climb or a valley that's so deep you can't hardly get out of it. Just know that whether you're on the mountain or whether you're in the valley, God is still the same. He's the God of the mountain and He's God in the valley. So keep your chin up, keep your faith, keep talking to the good Lord, doing what you know is right, kind, be Feed kind your family to your neighbor. Good food. Spend some time with your kiddos. Make some sweet memories. Y'all, we don't know what we're looking at. And this may be the best years that your kids will ever have in their life or your grandkids. So take advantage of the time you have with them. Make some sweet memories where you'll have something good to look back on, whether the future is good or whether the future gets really hairy. Sometimes memories can carry you when times are hard or sad. Now the Lord bless and keep y'all. And I will do my best to have a good video up Tuesday. If I'm not here Tuesday, you'll know something that was beyond my control came up. And I'll be here just as soon as I, I do can try to here. upload three videos a week. So I'll see y'all back in a day or two.